Well, good morning, church. Welcome to our Good Friday service. It's great to have you with us, uh, wherever you are, watching in your homes, uh, uh, together with your family. Uh, We do uh, lament that we can't gather together uh, like we normally would on this Easter weekend, uh, but it is wonderful through the uh, benefits of technology to be able to meet together in this way, uh, to worship our God together, to grow in God's Word, and uh, to remember and reflect uh, all that Jesus has done for us at the cross as uh, we meditate on uh, this Easter weekend uh, about God's gift to us. Uh, this morning, uh, we just want to welcome you if you're visiting uh, with us, uh, joining our stream for the first time uh, here at Caboolture Baptist Church. We just uh, want to say hi to you and uh, thank you for joining us. It's great to have you with us. Uh, our Easter Sunday service is going to be broadcast at 9 a.m. Uh, online at live.caboolturebaptist.org, here where you're watching it. Uh, we'll pop that link up on our Facebook page as well uh, and on our website for, so folk can find it there. Uh, but uh, yeah, join us on Sunday if you can. Uh, Pastor Loda is going to share our message with us on Sunday uh, and today as well. But on Sunday, uh, Linda, uh, our kids pastor, tells us that we have a special treat for the kids. We've got a kids message from our kids church coordinator. Uh, He'll be sharing something special for the little ones. Uh, So get excited about that. That'll come up uh, throughout our Sunday morning service. Uh, We're going to uh, open our service with some uh, worship together in a moment, Uh, but before we do that, uh, I'm going to pray. I just want to mention, while we're uh, a little bit disconnected uh, this way, uh, stay connected throughout the church uh, on our website, uh, Facebook, uh, for all of the updates and things that are happening here. Our church office is open too, so uh, if you need any assistance at all at this time, uh, don't hesitate to give us a ring, uh, have a chat to Colette in the office or contact one of the pastors. Uh, Our details are there and uh, we'd love to be able to connect with you uh, and uh, share with you in that way. Uh, All of uh, our giving details are on the website as well too uh, for our our regular church family. It's just one of the ways that we worship God in our giving, uh, helps support the work of the gospel here in this community. Uh, You can uh, find those links online on the website. Uh, They're there as well. And our bank details are in the the newsletter, which goes out each week. Uh, If uh, you'd like to get uh, onto our newsletter list, you can email us into the office as well too. And uh, give us your contact details, your email address, and uh, Colette will be able to send it out to you there. Uh, Let's uh, join in prayer together, and then we'll uh, worship God in song. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we do just uh, give you thanks and praise that we can gather this morning, uh, this Good Friday, as we share together around your word, as we meet at the communion table, and just remember again Christ's sacrifice for us, your great love and grace, your mercy to us, Lord, that gift of a Saviour. Father, we thank you for this uh, precious gift. And Lord, for the reminder, it is this uh, Easter weekend of, uh, of your great love for us. Father, we acknowledge that uh, we're probably celebrating and, and remembering Easter in a completely different way than we would have ever expected this year. Lord, uh, we thank you that even in the uh, uncertainty of all that's happening on the world stage, that we can trust you, our God, that you are still with us. We thank you for the certainty and for the hope that we have in Jesus and for what he has accomplished for us at the cross. Father, we do continue to pray for uh, our world. Uh, Lord, uh, we continue to pray for all of uh, those folk who are working, uh, researching, and and looking at finding ways to to find a cure for this COVID-19 virus. Lord, we continue to pray for uh, for that work and, and pray that it would be successful. Uh, Lord, for those who are serving on the front lines in, in, in medical care and uh, providing assistance to those that are unwell, we just continue to pray for them. Uh, Lord, for all of the, the, the folk who are working and uh, helping to keep uh, economies and nations and, and families in jobs, we just pray for those folk as well too. Uh, Lord, uh, for us here in Australia, we just continue to pray uh, for our nation for our state of Queensland, for our local area here in uh, Caboolture and the Morayfield area. Lord, uh, we just continue to pray for uh, your uh, blessing, for, for, for your peace at this time. And uh, Lord, we do thank you that we can come to you uh, today and just worship you together as a church family. 
We thank you, Lord, that we can lift our voice in song and sing your praise. We thank you, Lord, that we can share around your word and uh, remember Christ's death and resurrection for us as we share in communion a little bit later on. Lord, uh, we do pray that you'd prepare our hearts as uh, we worship you now. Uh, Lord, just uh, make us aware of your presence with us as we do church a different way. Yes, we uh, take advantage of the technology that's uh, been given to us to, to gather and to meet and to, uh, to share like this. We thank you, Father God, that you are with us by your Spirit. And so we'll, we just want to commit this time to you, Lord, and ask your blessing on it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Churches, encourage you to, uh, to sing wherever you are, uh, to lift your voice, to, uh, to meditate again, to worship our God together as a church family.
Well, good morning and welcome to our Good Friday service. We certainly live in, are living in difficult times today. Uh, we can identify or identify with the Apostle Paul who on at least three occasions had to write letters to churches reckon, reckoning that, um, that even though he can't be with them, he, he still longed to be there. One of such occasions is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 17, where he says, I can't be with you at the moment, however, our hearts have never let you, left you. So we as a church, we're separated today. In our homes, we're around the place, but in our hearts, we are together today. I hope that you will join me in prayer, not just today, but in your regular prayer life, in acknowledging a number of things that are happening in this difficult time. We need to be praying for our governments, for wisdom, for our federal government and for our state government, for the leadership which they are expressing and which they are showing to us and the way that they are leading us through this crisis. We need to be praying also for those who are affected by this coronavirus, this COVID-19 virus. People in our community, well, maybe, maybe not, but people in our country, in our state, around the world who are impacted by that. And also today, we want to express thanks. We want to express our thanks to the healthcare professionals and the support workers who are doing all that they possibly can in this, uh, in this situation. We have a number of healthcare professionals even in our own church and uh, you are especially in our thoughts and in our prayers at this time as, uh, as you help us in our community uh, address this, this issue. COVID-19, something which we hadn't, uh, hadn't even heard about uh, a few months, a few weeks ago. And so today we want to, well, just make reference to that, but to see how there are parallels between that and how we are living our lives in the presence of God. So to that end, I want to uh, turn your attention and, uh, and your thoughts to a passage of Scripture in Romans chapter 8, and I'd like to read from verse 31 to the end of the chapter. Romans chapter 8 and from verse 31. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, 
is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We know that God always blesses the reading of his word. COVID-19 has introduce new thoughts to us, new terms for us. A new term that we have had to come to, uh, come to grips with is this whole idea of social distancing, where according to our website, that social distancing, distancing means that we need to keep at least one and a half metres away from other people. Even today, as we've been presenting this service to you, we have been very conscious, both before and during this service, of being aware of social distancing. But even more important or more, uh, or more stark than social distancing is this whole area of quarantine or isolation. People who've been exposed, potentially, to COVID-19 uh, uh, put into quarantine or isolation where, according to our government website, says they need to stay at home, no public places like work or school, childcare or university, and no public gathering. This whole idea of separation which we are experiencing today from each other, that our society is experiencing, is something which, which is fairly new to us. And the impact of that is also starting to be felt around us as well. There's an impact to us physically. There are new rules for personal hygiene, for how we wash our hands, of how we interact, how we, we don't touch one another, how we greet one another. There is an impact also for our social gatherings as well. These public gatherings can be no more, whether it be work or play. But another impact has been in the whole area of our emotions as well. People, because of separation, because of quarantine or isolation, are experiencing loneliness and distress. We're being encouraged to look after ourselves for self-care. All of these things are new concepts, a new way of living life may never be exactly the same for us again. But there's another separation that I want us to be thinking about today. And the separation that I want us to be thinking about today is the idea of spiritual separation. Two times in this passage of scripture, which I've read to you today, that word separate occurs. And, and in verse 35 of Romans 8, Paul says to the church at Rome, he says, who shall separate us from the love of God? The fact that he asks that question is a strong indication, of course, that separation from God is, in fact, a reality. It is something which does occur. It is something which people in our society do experience today. In fact, even where you are sitting right now, you may be someone who is experiencing that separation from God. What is it that causes separation from God? Well, in this case, it's not coronavirus or COVID-19, but rather the Bible tells us that it is sin that separates us from God. It, just doesn't, it doesn't just distance us from God, rather it isolates us from God that we are totally separate. There is not just a, a, just a, a nearness, a distance, but, but we are totally isolated from him as a result of sin. 
And what is sin? Well, the Bible describes sin in various ways, but in essence it's saying this, that sin is is the belief that I can live my life my way without God. Sin is this belief that I can go it alone and, and, and some people today still choose to go it alone rather than go with God. This is the term, the term sin, which separates us. And the impact is important for us to understand, to come to terms with, that the impact of separation from God not only impacts us now, but will impact us from all, for all eternity. Putting it positively about life with God, there was a rich, young, powerful man who came to Jesus and said, what can I do to have eternal life? And, and it was in this term eternal life which everything was summed up about what life with God is all about. Eternal life means not just a quantity of life, that is life that goes on forever and ever, even after this physical life ends, But it also means a quality of life too. A quality of life even in the here and now where we are living our life with purpose for the kingdom of God. Spiritual separation is something which impacts every one of us. The Bible tells us that everyone has experienced this this isolation, this, this separation from God this way. But while our our medical people continue to to seek a cure for the coronavirus, we know that there is a spiritual cure for this separation from God. In this passage of scripture, we've just read about that. It says in verses 32 and 34 that God gave up his own son to die for us. That Jesus died on the cross for us to to take away the punishment and and the effects of this isolation from God, that we might be united again with him. The Bible tells us that this is an act of love, that it was because of his great love for us that Jesus came and died for us. Just like that well-known verse in John chapter 3, for God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal, everlasting life. God has acted in love in sending the Lord Jesus to die for us. It's important that we respond in love to him. He now invites us to respond to him in repentance. And this is what the Easter story is all about. In summarising the Easter story in just seven points, we come up with something like this. That around 2,000 years ago, the God-man Jesus walked around Palestine. When he was in his early 30s, he was falsely accused and wrongly tried and was sentenced to death, something that he didn't deserve. The punishment of uh, of death was by crucifixion, which was a common Roman capital punishment. And even though in human terms this was all a, a gross misjustice, the Father God took this wrong act and used it for his own eternal purposes. The death that Jesus died legally satisfied our punishment for our wrongdoings. We need to decide how we will respond to God. And we need to understand this very clearly, that if we accept him now on his terms, God will accept us into eternity. If we reject him now, he will reject us then. This is the Easter story. And in fact, today might be the most significant day of your life. As you think about all that the Lord Jesus has done for you and your willingness to respond in repentance 
in obedience to him. And when we do, what is the response? Well, the same passage of scripture gives us the answer in all of this. Later on, towards the end of this passage of scripture, in verses 38 and 39, it says, I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I am convinced that nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God. This immense act of love which has been demonstrated to us, which we remember on this Good Friday, is something which was done in the deepest love for us. Back in, um, in the 1800s, a man by the name of Charles Gabriel was born. He grew up to become a famous hymn writer and, and it's said that, that in his life that he wrote somewhere between seven and 8,000 songs. It says that he used to hear from his uh, pastor that uh, early in the week what his uh, pastor would be preaching on that Sunday and during that week would write a song especially uh, to fit in with what the pastor would be preaching on. One of the songs which is well known, which talks about the love of Jesus, which we remember at this time, goes this way. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvellous, how wonderful, and my song will ever be. How marvellous, how wonderful is my Saviour's love for me. Is that your testimony? It can be today. And for those of us who... Love the Lord Jesus, not only is it on Good Friday that we remember the death of our Lord Jesus, but the Lord Jesus, on the night before he was crucified, gathered with his disciples, gathered with them at this special meal called a Passover meal. And as they celebrated the meal, Jesus gave a new meaning for this meal. And he said to them, Do this each time you do it. Do it in remembrance of me. It was a a special meal in that it was Passover, and yet in other ways it was a normal meal as well. So I've invited you at home to just gather together some bread and some juice or wine or cordial or whatever to, in this special way, remember the death of our Lord Jesus. So I've just taken some bread and some juice and as we celebrate today this, this, uh, this special event of the Lord Jesus dying for us. The bread reminds us of the body of the Lord Jesus which was broken for us. Jesus said he, as he took the bread, he took it and he ripped it apart and he said, just as I rip this bread apart, so too on this first Easter, on this Good Friday, my body will be ripped apart for you. And he said, take it and eat it in remembrance of me. And in your own home, I invite you to, if you've prepared for this, to have a, take a bit of bread and be ready to eat it and as you eat it, to offer up your own personal thanks to the Lord Jesus. Allow me to pray. Say, Lord Jesus, we thank you for the death of our Lord Jesus. The death which in human terms was so wrong and yet spiritually was so right. We're so grateful that, Father God, your love for us was so great that you sent sent your son to die for us. For his broken body, as we remember that, we now eat in thankfulness for what he has done for us. The Bible tells us that on that occasion too, Jesus 
took a cup, a cup of wine, and he said, well, he said, this represents my blood, the blood of a new covenant, a new covenant of eternal life through the Lord Jesus, the precious blood of Jesus, which cleanses us from all our sin. Let's drink in thankfulness knowing that our sins that were dealt with on Calvary, on, at the, on the cross of Calvary, that the Lord Jesus paid the penalty so that, that isolation might not be our experience, isolation from God, but we might truly be a members of his family united together with him. Let's drink in remembrance of this. So, Father God, on this special Good Friday today, while we might be isolated and separated from family and from friends, people who we long to spend time with, to reach out and to touch them and to embrace them and and to communicate in that face-to-face way, uh, Lord, we know, we know that we can be united together through the shed blood of our Lord Jesus, united with you. To that end, Lord God, we give you our thanks, give you the praise and the glory and honour this Good Friday, this Easter, and we do so with thankfulness because of the Lord Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Exchange it 
someday for a crown to the old rugged cross I will ever be true it's shame and reproach gladly bear then he you all. Thank you for uh, worshipping with us this morning. Uh, we look forward to sharing together with you on Easter Sunday at 9am. Uh, Until then, take care. God bless.